Hey everyone, so welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, as you can see by the title, I will be addressing the uh, Gucci sweater blackface scandal and my thoughts on this whole situation. So if you may or may not have known, Gucci came out with a sweater, a turtleneck-like sweater that when you pulled it up, the girl looked like she was putting on blackface, you know, it was a black sweater with red lips, so of course when one puts it on, especially if they're white, when one puts it on over their face, it looks like they're imitating blackface. And as we all know, or as we all should know, blackface was used in the American media, of course, in history to mock, humiliate, and of course dehumanize people uh, of black skin, people with black skin, black people. It was used to basically mock, humiliate, and dehumanize us. But, uh, of course, we've seen countless times again, especially in recent years, in the Trump era, okay, that brands and businesses have used this as a, you know, marketing ploy and a marketing tool, you know, when this thing happens. So let me just uh, break it down in terms of my opinion, okay? So with this situation here, I looked at this scandal and of course I was offended by it. I was upset by it. But then now that I am a little more neutral with certain things and now that I think a little more critically, yes, I will boycott Gucci because I don't have Gucci in my you know, closet or I don't own anything Gucci. I feel like if I own anything Gucci, that means someone else with money probably got it for me or it was a gift or, you know, it could even be fake. But I have nothing that I own that's Gucci. I never intended to buy Gucci, okay? So, of course, it's easier for me to boycott this brand and because it is wrong and what they did was wrong and all the way offensive and I do not buy this whole we didn't know. A lot of us have been calling out big brands like Gucci and, you know, Prada, Louis and and all those big brands that people with money can buy and the celebrities that and the rappers that talk about wearing it can buy you know we've been always calling it out the average regular schmegular person have has always been calling Gucci out on how non-ethical or unethical and uh, racist they are okay and notice some a lot of these brands are originated by people like from Europe and overseas so it's not just like an American thing these places are like you know Italian they're like French they're you know all types of uh, you know UK brand originators you know they're from overseas and you can tell me oh they didn't know because you know they're not too many of us that that live over there you know this is like an American problem uh there are people like us that live over there so they know a lot of them know but these are old ass people with an old mentality and old way of thinking and of course you know anti-blackness is like global a global thing okay but Here's my take on this Gucci boycott. I am not taking this boycott seriously, okay? I, after H&M and after Starbucks, I have stopped taking black boycotts seriously. At this point, I do not take black boycotts seriously at all anymore, okay? I, I take them a lot less seriously. I am serious about it because even after the H&M scandal, I can go and buy H&M anytime I want. They always have a bunch of sales, you know? We, the everyday regular schmegler person can afford something at H&M. But I have not willfully gone into H&M or bought H&M since that scandal broke out. I even unfollowed them on Instagram okay I was actually a real one I, I guarantee you I am one of the few real ones that actually truly have boycotted H&M what seems like permanently okay but a whole bunch of you guys uh, claimed boycott H&M and you're back shopping with them and this is one of the reasons I do not take black boycotts seriously I said this to a friend everybody posting and reposting and retweeting and you know going off on Gucci talking about F Gucci and boycott Gucci uh, nine times out of ten most of you can't even afford Gucci okay some of you guys burning your fake Gucci bags talking about you're real about boycotting Gucci can't really afford Gucci or had fake Gucci stuff, okay? Someone said that there was a video of a girl who burnt her Gucci bags and they burnt very, very quickly, so clearly they were fake. 
okay? Uh, and then, you know, Soldier Boy claiming that he's only rocking Fendi and all that stuff, and he's getting rid of the Gucci tattoo on his forehead. Gucci Mane has kept pretty quiet about the situation because, you know, there was a post saying, hey, Gucci, are you going to get rid of uh, your, your name? Are you going to change it to Fendi Man? But at the same time, even though you claim, okay, boycott Gucci, we're only going to support Fendi and, you know, Hermes and, you know, all these other big brands that didn't mess up yet, okay? But at the same time, it, it doesn't really make a difference because they can mess up at any time t too and they probably have messed up in the past so what you're really doing is trying to assuage your consciousness by saying okay I'm just not going to support this high-end brand that I want to go broke trying to look rich for or give the imitation that I'm rich by wearing but I'm going to boycott this one brand and then support that other high-end brand okay and another reason I don't take black boycotts seriously was because it, it, it's there's no there's no collective really here, okay? I just want to say that there really is no collective. Um, it's some people who are here for it and then some people who aren't. And I, I get it. We're not a monolith. So, of course, we're not going to always be on the same page, which in our plight can be very problematic. But at the same time, I've learned to respect it because we're all human beings with individualistic um ways of thinking and ways of going about things, okay? However, with this particular situation, it also reminds me of Netflix. Lovely T also made a video about this Gucci situation. She talked about it in her live video and she just made a video about it and she took the words right out of my mouth. With Gucci, nine times out of ten, the people boycotting Gucci are the people who can't even afford it, so you never supported it, and it's easy to boycott something that you never supported in the first place, okay? With me, I even evaluate myself and said, okay, Monique says boycott Netflix. Okay, I was a little bit quick to jump on the bandwagon with that. Uh, in my opinion, I've never known Netflix to be too racially or gender biased, even though I can see it because we see this happen in the media and happen in businesses before. You know, a lot of these big companies, big corporations, institutions, there's a lot of institutionalized racism and sexism. So it wouldn't be surprising to me, which is why we jumped on it because, you know, she tugged at our, you know, I wouldn't say heartstrings, but she definitely, you know, triggered something within us that made us emotional to say, yeah, this this corporation hates women and hates uh, people of color and hates black people. So, yeah, it's, but guaranteed, most of you guys never had Netflix, weren't even paying for Netflix. And I'm saying, like, I evaluated myself on the situation. If I said I can just easily boycott Netflix because I don't, I don't have Netflix. Okay, I the way I watch Netflix shows is by, you know, watching with other people who do have Netflix. That's how I that's how I uh watch Netflix shows and can tell you about Netflix shows. But I don't have Netflix. It's easy for you to boycott something you never supported. So, I guarantee you, this is why you guys are so easily, you know, boycotting Gucci. Another thing I want to get at is how there's a level of hypocrisy with these black boycotts, okay? Some of you same people boycotting Gucci were the same people probably boycotting H&M, making excuses for H&M, going back and forth with this situation with H&M. You knew it was offensive, some of you, not all, because I saw a lot of black outrage with H&M, okay? But then there were some of you, some of you black folks, and a whole bunch of you white folks, which is not surprising, but some of you black folks were out here trying to make excuses for them, trying to, you know, say, calm down, it's not a big deal, even though you knew it was a big deal, but you like H&M and you want a reason to keep liking H&M. You don't want a reason to stop liking H&M. And that's one thing I noticed about black folks, okay? Black people have a loyalty to a fault, which is sometimes good and sometimes bad, but in this case, it's bad. You have a loyalty to a fault where even though someone is wrong or something is wrong or something is problematic, you will try to make excuses, you will try to uh, lower the situation, you will try to make it seem like the situation isn't as big as it is because you like that something or that someone and you don't want a reason to stop liking them, okay? You go through a state of cognitive dissonance and that is uh, pretty problematic. I understand we shouldn't be so quick at the drop of a hat to drop something, especially when we feel a bond 
or a closeness to it, but we should really evaluate ourselves. We shouldn't be caping and making excuses, okay, for people. We shouldn't be doing that because the only reason you guys were caping for H&M, white and some black alike, is because where else are you going to get your affordable clothes for $5? Your good-looking affordable clothes for $5. They H&M has a bunch of sales, as I mentioned before. They have a bunch of sales. They have some good stuff. They have good quality stuff that the regular schmegular person can afford. So you don't want to stop doing that because you probably don't know where else you can get your good looking clothes for five dollars okay so that's the main reason so there is a level of hypocrisy some of you guys were all about not supporting netflix and boycotting netflix and boycotting gucci and boycotting other high-end brands but you probably were never even paying for them but when it comes to the low-end stuff well not low-end but when it comes to the stuff that you can't afford and that you like and the big brands that you can't afford and like it's all excuses okay trust me i was a real one with this Anytime I had something new from H&M, that means somebody bought it for me. I have never willfully gone into H&M. And I, in a way, I barely shop. I barely buy clothes. You know, I'm trying to save my money. You know, I'm not so quick to buy clothes. There's a whole lot of stuff I want to buy, okay? Don't get it wrong. I want to buy a whole bunch of makeup. I want to buy a whole bunch of skincare. I want to buy a whole bunch of clothes. I just am trying to save my money because at this point, if anything that isn't business or food related... <laughs> I'm not buying it at the moment. I'm saving up. I'm trying to live a life that most people won't so I can live a life that most people can't. That that's that's the true utter nature of it all, okay? That's I'm not a spendthrift like that or at least I try not to be. I was always like this with my money. I'm a bargain hunter. I look for sales all over. You know, I'm very picky and call me call me cheap. I call myself thrifty and financially savvy. I just try to keep money in my pocket for a rainy day. A lot of people my age will probably spend all their money the minute they get a job because they just had the money at that time to get it but if god forbid they lose their job like i just did okay that sad story that i'm not gonna get into right now but if they jobs aren't secure but if they lose some stream of income they're probably broke or don't have that money for a rainy day another thing i want to get into is how it's starting to look and I'm not saying I'm just realizing this, but it's starting to look like these brands are on purpose and intentionally putting these things out because it's free marketing. There is marketing in outrage, in black outrage specifically. Jackie Ina even pointed this out. You know, there is marketing in that, okay? It's free marketing. It's like when the Bird Box thing came out. I was wondering, what is Bird Box? What is it about? I don't understand it, but I saw all these memes. And with this Gucci sweater thing that came out, there was a guy who posted it and he said, this is not by accident. He came out with a tweet. This guy came out with a tweet saying this wasn't by accident. And he said they are catching on to what H&M did. Now, when H&M first came out with that, you know, sweatshirt scandal with the coolest monkey in the jungle thing, at first I'm saying, okay, did you not see what Dove did? This is why you need to have us in the boardroom. This is why you need to have us here. This is why you need to, we need to be included in everywhere. And, and that's true. I say black folks, we need to be everywhere. We need to be in spaces that are not our own and we need to be in spaces that are our own. So I'm saying this is just a case of Look at the board directors, the people who are directors of the board. They they are all white, and I don't think there were a lot of females in there either. Okay, so of course this went left. But then I really started to take the time and evaluate the situation. I'm like, huh, that is true. They went viral. A lot of people are talking about it. They came out with like two apologies saying that we didn't know, we're just trying to do better. And and I feel like what they're doing was just trying to, to go viral. And maybe even if that wasn't the case, it still worked. And that's why I feel like nowadays they're using racism as a new marketing tool, especially in the beauty community. I see this, especially when uh, lines and brands are trying to drop new foundations. I feel like some of them intentionally come out with a bad batch or a exclusive shade range or a lackluster shade range and undertone range so people can go and be mad and you know post repost click like share and just make this go viral and then they'll come out with a half-assed apology or just any apology you know apology and say we didn't know and at this point it's starting to look like no you did know because you just saw how this was free marketing you just saw how it seems like you just did it so you can get a rise out of us it's not even like they were planning to sell that item. They just wanted to get a rise out of us. Because some people some people are bullies like that. They will just 
try to see you get a rise because it's fun to do it. So I say, this is why when I saw the sweater scandal with Gucci, I said, okay, I'm angry, I'm mad, but I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to take my merry way and, you know, buy black, support black. Anyone who knows me know knows I like to support black people, black businesses, especially if they are of a good quality. I'm also big on service, okay? You know what I'm saying? So, yes, I am saying I'm not, I'm going to protest with my dollars and I'm going to be silent. I'm not going to join in. I'm not going to, you know, say uh, boycott this. I'm not going to post. I'm not going to repost. I'm just going to say my little piece and I'm just going to walk away. And that's what thinking critically and being neutral will do to you. You are not riled up so much on emotion, especially when at the end of the day you realize it was all bullshit. Excuse my French. I will, I, I try not to curse too much, but excuse my French. Okay. Especially when you realize that it was all BS and then you come back and you come back to earth and then you say, you know what, they were probably doing this just to get a rise, just to go viral, just to get marketed. But I'm saying at the end of the day, it is a big brand. Even when H&M came out with that uh, scandal, Wendy Williams said, you know what, this whole boycotting H&M, it's not going to hurt the H&M brand. And I agree with her. One of the reasons it's not going to hurt the H&M brand, because a bunch of you guys claiming that you will boycott H&M, you still went back. So I actually am a real one. I'm one of the few real ones who actually never went back, but I can never say never. But at the same time, it's like I don't take the boycott seriously because you still went back to H&M and the only reason you are actually boycotting Gucci and boycotting things like Netflix is because you never really supported them. So again, it's easy to boycott something you never supported in the first place. So in my opinion, this boycott, black boycotts nowadays, until I see that there is a real protest with the dollars and a silent protest with the dollars, not with likes, clicks, shares, uh, going back and forth with people in the comments, especially if they agree with, uh, you know, the, the scandal. Until you just be quiet and just protest with your dollars, don't just say buy black, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. Don't just say buy black, just do it. You know what I'm saying? And promote it. Lovely T even said, why aren't you just promoting black designers in the process? Why are you promoting black designers? You know what I'm saying? Why aren't you doing that? Why aren't these rappers, especially the rich black folks, the rich celebrities you love so much, you may criticize them from here uh, and there and time to time, but you love them so much. Your favorite rappers, when they're rocking their Gucci's and their Prada's and their Fendi's and their Hermes and you guys are going broke trying to look rich, uh, trying to be like them, in a way, and you guys think you've made it with some level of materialism and this label whoring we have in our community, or not even in our community, but in poor communities. I remember a guy saying uh, one time, I saw it in the video, and he was explaining his life and everything and how he became an entrepreneur, and it was about when those Jordans came out for like $650, those limited edition Jordans, and he was talking about how when he was growing up, you know, and he's poor and from the hood, he noticed that the poorest people had the most expensive stuff but then they're complaining that they're broke okay and that's why I, I, I'm a bargain hunter that's why I look for sales that's why I don't shop a lot because I'm not spending money at this moment when uh, I have things that I have to do for my business and when I have things that you know for my basic necessities so like I said anything business or food related is what I'm spending my money on at the moment okay and speaking of business and buying black let me get into this right now I am so ashamed at some of you guys and disappointed at some of you guys and this is why I don't take black boycotts seriously because it's always when a scandal is out for the most part it's always when like a scandal is out like with Gucci and H&M this narrative of this is why we need to buy black and this is why we need to you know do this and I understand some of you guys were probably already buying black which was great but some of you guys really 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 push the narrative like it's so serious when a racist thing happens and i remember this girl i forgot her name but she's on instagram and she does these videos where she's like man listen and she did this one video that i totally agree with she said stop making buying black the backup plan when these racist companies offend you or when someone from a non-black owned company or white owned company offends you and then now we're all on instagram tagging black owned businesses black owned businesses here's uh, some black nail salons you should shop at here's some black restaurants you should go to here's some black high-end clothing brands you should support you should have been doing that from the beginning it should be natural. Now, granted, I 
as a black entrepreneur, because I have a shop, I make things, I sell them, you know, I have my shop, I'm, I will probably leave the link to that shop in the description, okay, I sell on two sites. But at the same time, it's like, it's like there's this big push to support black in the midst of a protest. Like, the woman said buying black should not be our protest, but our practice, and that is true. Now granted, on the plus side of this, because I looked at it, on the plus side, as a black entrepreneur and as a black consumer, the plus side is if these scandals are the kick in the butt that we and other people need to come to our shops and like buy black, support black, you know, promote black uh, businesses. And I'm talking about good quality, good standard, good customer service black businesses as well. You know what I'm saying? I tell, I tell the black entrepreneur all the time, put your best foot forward, okay? But the this push to buy black, uh, if this is the kick in the butt that we need, so be it. Because as an entrepreneur, their loss is my gain. But then at the same time, you're rushing to me as a backup plan because this company offended you, so now you're gonna go dig and search and try to find me or find other black entrepreneurs to support in the midst of that. Okay, that is a real slap in the face. That's like asking someone out to prom, and I say this all the time. This is like asking someone out to prom and your first choice rejects you, and then you run to your second choice hoping that, you know, they're open enough or desperate enough to take your business and in some ways kind of guilt tripping them some ways kind of guilt tripping them into not accepting you because you're making them feel like you they need you more than you need them you know what i'm saying i'm not saying everyone does it like this but some of you guys do you make it the backup plan in the midst of a protest, but I'm saying it seems like that's an empty threat because with H&M, I was all up in H&M's comment section promoting myself, talking about, hey, I have a sale going on right now. I have a sale going on right now, 40% off uh, for this whole entire month of February, okay? I Everything in my shop, excluding, you know, downloadable patterns, are made to order, ready to ship, and handmade by me. I make everything I put in my shop by hand, okay? I am a hand maker because I, you know, I crochet and I knit. Everything I make is by hand. So, and I, I even say I'm open to custom orders, okay? Everything I make in my shop is by hand and I am having a sale for all those finished products, 40% off right now. I will even leave the code down in the description if you're that interested, okay? But I'm saying this, when H&M came out with their scandal, I was promoting myself, I was, you know, in their, uh, you know, comment section promoting myself with all these people I saw talking about we're canceling H&M and this is why we need to buy black well I'm saying okay black entrepreneur black owned business right here I am you know promoting myself and I didn't even get one sale now granted I wasn't trying to promote myself for the sake of getting one sale but I actually did it to show if people were really about that boycott if you were really about the boycott and protesting with your dollars, instead of just liking, sharing, clicking, commenting, and talking about how you want to boycott H&M, Gucci, and all that stuff, put your money where your mouth is. I should have been flooded with sales that day. And during this whole, uh, you know, H&M scandal, this whole Gucci scandal, I should have been flooded with sales. I'm doing a month-long sale right now, and we're almost halfway into the month and still nothing. Now, granted, I'm not going to say I made no sales the whole time I've done my business. I'm not saying I haven't gotten support from any of my people. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that this whole big talk about promote black, buy black, this is why we, we, we need to take our spending power some of there. And some of the celebrities who claim to be canceling Gucci, I feel like in a few months later, they're going to be silently wearing Gucci again, or at least getting them as gifts. Because, you know, sometimes these big brands like Gucci and whatnot, they send bloggers and they send big celebrities and influencers like free stuff for them to promote. And they even pay them to do that. So, of course, some people are not going to stop their, their bag and stop their coin. Now, if they have enough integrity to do that and realize that there are other brands and they can live without Gucci. Cool. I feel like that is so, so, so respectful. However, like some of you guys, I'm telling you, some of you, how Lovely T likes to call mush mouth people on the internet, you're all talk, but where's the action? I want to see some action right now. Prove to me that you are about this uh, Gucci boycott and support black. Buy black. Okay, I will be leaving my shop link down below. This is not a promotion. This is just a test. Okay, 
Like I said, I'm promoting myself. I didn't need a scandal like this to promote myself. I've been doing that since day one, and I'm waiting on all these guys who claim, hey, tag the black business, tag the and support the black business. And, and I'm saying, okay, I'm the black business. I have winter wear. Winter is it, it, still in effect. In a way, it's almost over. So get your stuff stock up right now. You're actually getting a good enough discount. And, and of course, since some of you guys, since we have that stereotype going around that we always like to ask for the discount, you know, the homie hookup, and we're told not to ask for a discount, uh, I'm giving you the discount. You didn't have to ask for it. 40% off this whole entire month. You have no excuse at this point. Okay, and I don't think my stuff is that expensive. Okay, of course it's handmade, so it may be pricier than you know the mass-produced H&M hats and headbands and whatnot. But I'm telling you this, okay? I'm actually giving people a fair shot here. Okay, and of course I have certain expenses to pay. I may not have a mortgage, I may not have rent, but I have other expenses to pay, and I don't have a job for it right now. At this point, this shop is my only source of income. And what hurts me the most, what really bugs me, because Lovely T had to do this one time when she was trying to get people for her Patreon sometime last year, two years ago. She basically had to show people how bad it was behind the scenes so people would actually donate to her Patreon. You could say it was a sympathy thing. I don't think it was a sympathy thing because if she wanted sympathy she would have shown this a long time ago I really don't believe it but it gets to the point where it's too much and we as struggling black solo entrepreneurs because I'm a solopreneur I do everything myself I make the items I take the pictures I edit the pictures I market I, I don't have a team behind me because I can't afford a team behind me and who's willing to intern right okay I'm doing everything by myself even with this YouTube thing I'm doing everything myself Okay, and I'm saying almost four years into the game of my business, I feel like it hasn't gotten to the point where I want it to be yet, or at least it, sh it hasn't gotten to the point where it should at this level. And it's not just black folks not supporting me or not enough black folks not supporting me. And I get it. We are distracted. We are, certain places are oversaturated. I, I'm, I'm new and I'm small, so I could get lost in a, in a big sea of bigger you know, brands and stuff like that. That's cool. But I'm saying I believe I put make good products. I believe I put out good customer service. I believe, you know, and, and like I said, I'm open to custom orders. All you have to do is message me. Okay? You know what I'm saying? And I try to get back. Like I said, I'm doing everything myself. And I, I feel like it's sad. What really hurts is the fact that I feel I have to come on here and tell you how bad things are going for you guys to see that, you know, some of this stuff is real. We're trying to get off the ground here. We just need support. And then all this talk about how we don't get capital. You, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's just too much. So, yeah, I know I miss probably a lot more. This is probably a deeper conversation. Um, but, but I want to hear what you guys think. So, leave your thoughts down in the comments section i will be leaving the link to my shop i will be leaving the coupon code to all my stuff i hope you guys enjoy this video tell me your thoughts don't forget to like comment and subscribe and uh, i will see you in the next video